No. No way. No way. Okay, first reactions. Surely not. Hello Electroheads. This is the most compact electric scooter in the world, weighing in at just under five kilograms. It's 40% lighter than a Xiaomi 365. It's small but equally mighty, reaching a top speed of 50 miles per hour and claims to cover up to 15 miles in range. And yet all of this can fit neatly into your backpack. What? <laughs> Say what? Say what? No, you are not having a fever dream. Neither have you fallen down the rabbit hole in a pretty blue dress to drink size shrinking potion. This really is a legitimate product primed to hit the market. I think we should take a closer look, but before we, oh, right on cue, of course, of course she's gonna beat me to it, but she has a great point. Please do make sure to like this video if you enjoy it, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, and also go and check out our Instagram at Electroheads because we've got loads of cool content, so give us a follow. This is the Blizzwill e-scooter, and whether you like it or not, all signs lead towards this tiny toy ride going into production. Its Kickstarter campaign launched in September 2021, and just over a month later, it already has over 260 60 backers, totaling pledges of over 81,000 pounds, which is over 10 times more than their original target. Hells yeah. As you may have seen from the success of tiny e-rides like the Hype Hover One, Xiaomi Hemo H1 or Fido, there is a cult following for this punchy miniature style of build that more often than not can be found on Alibaba. Wait, you haven't seen the Fido before? Well, what are you waiting for? Go check out our review by clicking the link above. People still want to spend their hard-earned dosh on these novel get-arounds, most likely because we're all still big kids at heart and want to experience that playful, childlike glee, just this time with a powerful piece of kit rather than like a hand-me-down push tricycle. Why don't we take a look at performance? Blizzwheel are offering four modifications, but I want to talk about the Pro specifically because it is seriously impressive. It's got dual brushless DC motors that deliver 600 watts of power. What does that mean? Well, it will be able to kick off from a standstill pretty sharpish and give it an edge on steeper inclines. Bear in mind, most of the popular off-the-shelf electric scooters are between 250 to 500 watts. Blizz will claim a top speed of 50 miles per hour and range of 50 miles, but that will be dependent on rider weight and what kind of terrain you'll be riding on. If you weigh more than 90 kilograms, then I'm afraid this scooter is not for you. But we have reviewed five electric scooters under 500 pounds for you to take a look at, so make sure to click the link above. Would I want to ride 50 miles per hour with this scooter? I don't know, certainly not on British roads if e-scooters were legalised. Potholes are rife here. Also, I think I'd probably be laughed off the road or killed because look at those wheels. A woodlouse is better suited to them. I actually can't find an official size on their website, but I'm going to hazard a guess that they're about like three inches. Whatever it is, they are minuscule, but that clearly hasn't put people off. So what does happen when you roll over a bump or a crack? Well, it looks like Blizz will have already designed the answer. Towards the back of the platform is a hinge so that when you make contact with bumps and potholes, it splits and reduces the overall impact. This also gives the added benefit of having the same height clearance as larger scooters. Now, I'm afraid I am skeptical of how much this can really do, but I am willing to test this out for myself. So, Blizzwill, if you're watching, send us a scooter because I want to be proven wrong. In reality, this looks to be much more suited to a last mile solution when you get off public transport or get you nipping to your next seminar on uni campus. Students, any of you watching? Would you like this around your campus? Let me know down in the comments. I just still can't believe how they've managed to fit everything in there. This teeny 15.6 American inch scooter is so efficiently packed in with components, even Marie Kondo would throw her hat out of the ring if she saw this. In the front frame is the motherboard and the battery, and in the back is another battery pack. There's mechanical and electrical brakes, as well as built-in front and rear LED lights with indicators. The casing is built from aircraft-grade aluminium, resistant to rusting, and between the handlebars is a digital display to show you speed, battery life, and mileage. There's even an app that comes with it that allows you to lock the motors if you ever need to leave it parked up, but Realistically, if it can fit in your backpack or be carried around like a clunky handbag, that's probably a bit excessive. Oh, and did I mention it has a rating of IP65? I am shook at how much this e-scooter packs. Its spec is 
admirable. But how much does it cost? Well, that's not so light on the pockets. If you manage to jump on the pre-order, you could have bagged the scooter for $449, but the retail price for the Pro, it's gonna be a whopping $829. That is an eye-watering cost for something so teensy. Would you pay $829? The team of five at Blizzwill has been focusing on portable electric vehicles for over five years and even have these mad Tron-like skates called Blizzwill e-skates. For better or worse judgment, the Kickstarter campaign for those did flop. So the second time around, they've gone for something slightly more appealing to the wider public, but it sounds like they've got a lot of overhanging costs to cover. Final thoughts. Well, fair play to Blizzwill for thinking innovatively and proving that with the right design, you don't need much to put together a powerful electric scooter. The convenience of being able to stash it in your bag or neatly put it in your desk drawer at work is unbelievable. They've listened to the people and really taken the word portable to the next level. Perhaps a few too many levels. I do worry about how safe this actually is. Fair enough if you need it as a mobility aid in like a shopping center with a very smooth floor, but my better judgment says I'd be wary about taking this outside into the real world. I know this is going to divide a lot of opinions, so come on. What do you think? Drop me a comment below. Please do make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and give us a thumbs up because it makes me really happy. See you soon.